the work commute. If you chase gainful employment and can't work from home, you probably have one. Through snow and summer, it's there even when you may not want to be. Mine happens to be 54 miles each way. I can't complain because I actually chose it. But as the years roll by, besides hurtling vehicles and suicidal game, my consciousness only registers from landmark to landmark. It's varied, and it doesn't get old, but it doesn't get any newer either. Every day, I head south out of the valley, cross near the casino, cut east by the lakes and up the river to my home away from home. Do my best to help folks in the community, and then repeat. And no, I'm not taking you inside there. Seasons on these lakes are measured by the waterfowl present. Ducks give way to geese, with swans late winter being eclipsed by pelicans in the summer. It's cool and all but the topography of this area begs for things to be mixed up just a bit. The sensible scenario? Make the commute longer! Have your non-mechanical self throw on a big untested gas tank? Treat pavement like the plague wherever possible. Take dirt roads and tracks from satellite images the map's ignored. And those that don't even register on satellite? Definitely take those! A 170 miles solo ride as far from another living soul as possible sounds perfectly responsible. The ultimate mental health kick in the seat of the pants that no psychiatrist would ever prescribe. What a pity. The less said about the workday, the better. I arrived later than planned and left later than hoped. But I give it my all. I did. Then I headed north through the tallest mountain range I could find. Closed gates got me scrambling to find a way out. Eventually had to cut out and beeline home into the setting sun since my family expects me to live at home. Don't know why, really. The highlight of my ride was hitting the top of St. Joe Baldy, 
the most prominent landmark in the area. Locals in St. Mary say stuff like, When the snow melts off Big Baldy, the St. Joe River is warm enough to swim in. No, it's not. But it doesn't stop them from saying it anyway. It's bumpier and steeper to the 5,800 foot summit than it looks. For the first time, I begin to wonder what would happen if I pitched over the edge. What would they say when they eventually found me? Well, he died living. At any rate, I ended up hugging the inside track and gave up the best camera views. This way I get to actually keep my memories for a while. Well, hey, look who forgot to turn the camera off. There it sits. But the consolation prize is, we caught a visitor. Seriously? You've just come up the only side of a mountain road. What do you do before you head back down again? Check the GPS to make sure it's still there. For you hiker types, that trail leads up a ridge and drops down to Crystal Lake. This is the lower trail. Turns out, Baldy doesn't look nearly as impressive from the north side. There's never enough time to see where all these places go. It'll have to wait.
That's right, Bozo. You're not on your carefully planned spontaneous track anymore. Hindsight proved I should ignore the tracks and go with my gut, since closed gates put me right where I was going anyway. But no way down. This sleep-inducing I-90 coverage will about do it. For those of you who know what an outro is, good for you. For those of you who don't know what an outro is, when I shot this, neither did I. <laughs>